Louisianians are no strangers to hurricanes. We've even named a drink after them. But no two hurricane seasons are alike, and living on the Gulf Coast means you need to be prepared for the worst. TGMC annually prepares for this time of year and would like to review their tactics for keeping patients safe when the winds start to pick up speed. All right, joining us now is Percy Mosley with Terrebonne General Medical Center. And of course, you have seen uh, Percy quite a bit over the years here on the program. So uh, we appreciate you being here, Percy. Thank you, Morton. Thanks Every, for having everything me. Everything going okay with you? Huh? Very good. So far, it's early. And you always got to outdress me. <laughs> you know, I had to get with that one out of the way right away. I understand. All right, let's talk about uh, hurricane preparedness uh, at the medical center. And, of course, we have to let everybody know, first of all, when is hurricane season? Right now, hurricane season starts June 1 through uh, November 31. Of course, there's no uh, time uh, zone out there, you know. I mean, we, it can happen today as well as December 1st. Right. So we just want to make sure everybody knows. We know when it is, but we're going to make sure they got their calendars That's out. Right. Uh, how does Terrebonne General Medical Center prepare? And I, I know we've we've talked about this before in the past. So in advance, not not while the hurricane's happening, but how do you get ready for it? Well, we start planning. Uh, we start talking about Hurricane January one. So we're in the uh, hurricane mode year round. We start planning, start uh, preparing for uh, whatever may come out there. We have uh, we have to get uh, supplies, we have to get food, we have to get fuel, we have to keep our generators in line. So uh, we have a committee that we get together on January uh, 1 and we meet uh, bi-weekly uh, mm -hmm. all the way through. And uh, there again, like I say, come uh, June 1, that's too late to plan. I mean, right. we have to be ready at June 1. Got to be ready to go. Mm -hmm. The supplies that Terrible and General Medical Center keeps on hand in the event of a hurricane, We've had that question a lot over here. How, how much do the medical centers keep? At Terrebonne General, how much do y'all keep? We have to plan for seven days. We have to be ready for seven days. But as of right now, uh, since uh, Katrina and Gustav, we, we're supplied for 14 days. Uh, fuel, food, water, uh, you know, because you never know what water you're going to have or what's going to happen. If, we, if our water gets contaminated, uh -huh. we have to be ready for our people that we have still behind. Yeah, and what are some of the items in stock? Uh, I think they might have that uh, in graphics. Uh, what are some of those items? S such as food items? Yeah, yeah, a little um, bit of everything. Yeah, well, well, in the food the food item thing here, we have, um, we have to do with, uh, we don't have canned food. I mean, we have sandwiches. We're only preparing for the people that is left behind. Uh, sometimes we have uh, staff left behind. Sometimes we have patients, and that's all go according to diets. But uh, such as uh, the uh, water, we have to have abundant amount a ton of water. Of water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we have Just to, really the bare necessities yes. to, get to keep, keep yeah. them all going. Mm -hmm. Now, does Terrebonne General Medical Center have, and I remember when they were switching all these, these frequencies and everything else, and uh, that, that was always people trying to keep up with it, but do they have channels in place to communicate uh, with the state and parish emergency office? Yes, we have uh, the 700 megahertz radios uh, in place uh, as well. I can uh, contact uh, state police, sheriff's office, city police. I can contact anyone along with the uh, DHH, LHA area. So we're in constant contact with those people. We have a HEAR radio in the emergency room, which is the emergency uh, uh, radio that uh, anyone can contact us from outside. We also have uh, HAM operators that we bring in for an event, okay? Uh, HAM operators, those guys. They're great and they love doing what they oh, do, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, we have cell phones, but you know, there again, you can lose your cell phone. Yeah. So in case we lose all our phone system, we do have uh, uh, satellite phones, okay, uh, you know, for, for everybody. So we can keep in contact with everyone. Our cell phone, our satellite phone is hardwired as well, and we do have a hard line uh, also. Every time you say ham radio, I think of Dr. Quinalty. He's Dr. Quinalty. Yeah, he always has those yeah. ham radios. That's right. Working. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back more on hurricane preparedness at Terrebonne General Medical Center. It's all next. Don't go away.
put together a crew of top specialists. And you can do amazing things. Cardiac care at TGMC. It all begins here. I'm a director here at the Little Theater in Homa. Sometimes I've acted, and I've even played in the orchestra. My name is Karen Schilling, and I was treated for breast cancer at Mary Bird Perkins at TGMC. Quality medical care and compassion should go hand in hand, and I definitely got that at Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. My doctors were incredible, and the technology is state of the art. I believe that everyone at Mary Bird Perkins at TGMC deserves a standing ovation. All right, welcome back to your health with Terrebonne General Medical Center. And once again, we are with Percy Mosley. He's the Terrebonne General Medical Center Director of Protective Services and Region 3 Regional Coordinator. And uh, we are talking about hurricane preparedness at the medical center. Now, let me ask you this, the, the emergency room. Will the hospital uh, be able to accommodate emergency room patients during a hurricane? Not during a hurricane. Um, once the roadways are closed, once everything is shut down, we will we'll be in place to assist emergency people, emergency uh, operation crew, EOC people that's out there on the ground if something happens to them. We will have physician in place. We have someone in the emergency room to assist those, those people. But we hope there is no patients that are out there needing to come in during the hurricane. But yes, but we will be there unless we have to evacuate our facility. Right. Now, Critical care patients, how do you deal with them at Terrible and General Medical Center when there's a storm approach? Well, what happens, uh, Mark, we start planning for that. And the minute uh, it gets the threat, our uh, CEO, our uh, administrative people, and clinical people get together, and we start discharging patients as soon as possible. Get as many people out of the hospital, out of harm's way, as, as soon as possible. We also, we have assistance, you know, with uh, DHH, LHA, we have a system in place now called Average Registry and EM Stats System that we have to download in the system constantly. We have to, and it's at real time, okay? So what happened is, you know, uh, with the hurricane, we work on the H hour, okay? At H hour 120, I start on conference call. At H hour 120, it's still sunny outside, everybody's still chilling, having a good time. Right. Right. So at H hour 120, I start conference calls all the way down to zero. At H hour 60 is where I make the decision, hey, this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna shelter in place, this is what I need. This is the patient I have left. I might start out with 200 patients that I put in my system, mm -hmm. and I might discharge all the way down to 60, might discharge down to 30, right. okay? But at H hour 60 is when I make the decision, this is where I'm at. Now, if I have to evacuate, and all of my ground sources is over, uh, I deplete all of my ground sources, ground units or whatever, mm -hmm. I have assistance called uh, MIEP, which is the Medical Institute Evacuation Plan, yeah. okay? Which we hope we don't ever have to go to that, you know, to bring that in, uh, the C-130 plan. That is not a comfortable thing, yeah. you know, but we hope we never have to go to that. Now, what about Terrebonne General Medical Center? I, I think in one, and we've covered so many hurricanes here at HTV, and I remember at one point, people actually go and knock on the medical center thinking that it would be a shelter Yes. I mean, uh, where is that all going? Well, the one thing, we, we try and get out there very early morning. We let everybody know the hospital is not a shelter, right. okay? So we're trying to get the word out for these people to get their family, get their loved one out early. Get them out before it get to that point right. because the hospital is not a shelter because now you're putting yourself in harm's way if we have to evacuate, right. okay? And, and whoever's coming to that door, your family don't know where you're at. So right. no, the hospital is not a shelter. Um, we we are uh, we tag along with the uh, OEC with uh, OEP's office, you know. So we're in constant contact with those guys, and uh, so we put out all the shelters, just like as you do. You have all the shelters out uh, beforehand. Let everybody know what shelters available. Now, if there's a, a category three or above coming right at us, we don't have any shelters open right. here. Right. You know. So now you are. I mean, and as a law enforcement official, you, you have a lot of experience with the sheriff's department and every everything right. else. So. Uh, how should individuals prepare for hurricane season? For the one thing they need to do, like I said a minute ago, more they need to start preparing in January. They need to get cash on hand. They need to put cash aside. They need to have water. They need to have a container 
ready at home to pick up and go tomorrow, mm -hmm. okay? Don't start packing tonight because we have a hurricane about to hit the Gulf. Right. They need to get flashlights. They need to get uh, their credit cards together. They need to, uh, a camera. They need to take pictures of everything they have in their plays, but they need to do that starting January, not May 31st. And when they're evacuating, what kind of advice would you give? Them? Well, the, the main thing when they evacuate is the plan for a long ride. So you plan for, if you plan to leave today and it's 30 minutes, plan for an hour, two hours ahead mm -hmm. because it's, it's gonna be a long haul, okay? Fuel up your vehicles early, check your tires, make sure you have a, two spare tires, not just one in your vehicle, if you can, okay? But also make sure you have quarters, you know, for, for a cell phone, for a phone on the roadway or anything like that, medicine. Uh, make sure you have your, bring your prescription with you, Con your doctor's information, anything that you can get back in contact with. Always let someone outside your family that you know know where you're going, what direction you travel as well. Well, we certainly uh, appreciate your time here tonight. And I just got to ask you, I always sort of tease some of the guests sometimes, when's the contest? Which contest? The best that? dressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's always in place. You always, <laughs> always dressed to the T. I like that. Very classy. All Thank right. You. We're going to take a break. And look, I go way back with Percy with softball games, everything. So I could tease him a little bit like that. But anyway, we'll take a break. When we come back, uh, we're going to have more. Nickel State baseball coach Seth Thibodeau is here. David Miller is going to take over. And uh, listen to Seth. He's got a good thing going over there. We'll be right back.